Agada, Jewish Babylonian Aramaic Agadeta, Tales, Lore. Place Agado, Ashkenazi pronunciation Agados refers to non-legalistic exegetical texts in the classical rabbinic literature of Judaism, particularly as recorded in the Talmud and Midrash. In general, Agada is a compendium of rabbinic texts that incorporates folklore, historical anecdotes, moral exhortations, and practical advice in various spheres, from business to medicine. In terms of etymology, the cognate Hebrew, Haggadah means, telling. While the Aramaic root grand as well as ngd, from which gdh may arise has the dual implication of expanding, drawing out and binding, drawing in. Correspondingly, the Agata may be seen as those teachings which communicate rabbinic traditions to the reader, simultaneously expanding their understanding of the text, while strengthening their religious experience and spiritual connection. The root also has the meaning, flow, and here relates to the transmission of ideas. As part of the Jewish Oral Law The Agata is part of Judaism's Oral Law Twer SBLPH the traditions providing the authoritative interpretation of the written law. In this context, the widely held view in rabbinic literature is that the Agata is in fact a medium for the transmission of fundamental teachings homiletic sayings mmrim limedium or for explanations of verses in the Tanakh exegetic sayings in rabbinic thought, therefore, much of the Agada is understood as containing a hidden, allegorical dimension, in addition to its overt, literal sense. In general, where a literal interpretation contradicts rationality, the rabbis seek an allegorical explanation. We are told to use our common sense to decide whether an Agada is to be taken literally or not. Carmel, 2005. Literal allegorical teachings Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lozato, the Ramchal, discusses this two-tiered, literal allegorical mode of transmission of the Agadah in his well-known discourse on the Haggadah. He explains that the oral law, in fact, comprises two components, the legal component, Hulku Hazwau discussing the mitzvah and halakha, and the secret component, Hulku Sweto discussing the deeper teachings. The Agata, along with the Kabbalah, falls under the latter. The rabbis of the Mishnaic era believed that it would be dangerous to record the deeper teachings in explicit, Mishnah-like, medium. Rather, they would be conveyed in a concealed mode, and via paradoxes. Due to their value, these teachings should not become accessible to those of bad character, and due to their depth they should not be made available to those not schooled in the ways of analysis. This mode of the transmission was nevertheless based on consistent rules and principles such that those equipped with the keys would be able to unlock their meaning, to others they would appear as non-rational or fantastic. <laughs> Interpretation of the Agata In line with the above, Samuel ibn Nagrilla, in his Introduction to the Talmud, states that Agata comprises any comment occurring in the Talmud on any topic which is not a commandment i.e. which is not halashik and one should derive from it only that which is reasonable. As regards this, Maimonides, in his preface to the 11th chapter of Tractate Sanhedrin Chelik, describes three possible approaches to the interpretation of the Agata. The first approach is to accept the Agata as literally true, without admission of any hidden, allegorical explanation even where a literal interpretation runs counter to common sense. Maimonides is dismissive of this approach. The second approach is to assume that anything said by the sages was intended literally, and to therefore reject, as impossible, non-rational or fantastic teachings and to consequently consider the sages as simpletons and ignoramuses. Maimonides does not entirely reject rationalist interpretation, but he opposes an exegetical approach which denies the agata a hidden rationality. The sages presented their drashot in a style by which the mind of a fool will reject them because of his way of thinking, it is improper to assign any deficiency to the drash. One may rather suspect that the deficiency is a result of his intellectual shortcomings." Commentary on the Mishnah, Introduction. The third approach is to recognize that many agado are intended to teach profound truths, and that the teachings thus operate on two levels, overt, and hidden. 
Thus any impossible assertion was, in fact, intended as a parable. Further, where agado can be understood literally, they may be taken on this level. This is, in general, the view of the rabbis. It is proper, to carefully analyze the agado. When any of these seem far-fetched we must immerse ourselves in the various branches of knowledge until we understand the concepts. Maimonides, op cit, note that Maimonides' approach is also widely held amongst the non-rationalistic, mystical streams of Judaism. Thus, for example, Rabbi Isaiah Horowitz, the Shla HaKodosh holds that, "...none of these sometimes mind-boggling stories are devoid of profound meaning, if anyone is devoid of understanding, it is the reader." Shnei Luchos Habris, Introduction in the Talmud and Midrash The Agadah is today recorded in the Midrash and the Talmud. In the Midrash, the Agadic and Halakhic material are compiled as two distinct collections, one. The Agadic Midrashim, generally, are explanatory Agadah, deriving the sermonic implications from the biblical text, and two, the Halakhic Midrashim derive the laws from the text. Many of the Torah commentaries, and the Targumim, interpret the Torah text in the light of Agadic statements, particularly those in the Midrash, and hence contain much material on Agadah interpretation. Throughout the Talmud, Agadic and Halakhic material are interwoven. Legal material comprises around 90%. Tractate Avoth, which has no Gemara, deals exclusively with non Halakhic material, though it is not regarded as Agadic in that it is focused, largely, on character development. The Talmudic Agada, generally, convey the deeper teachings, though in concealed mode, as discussed. The Agadic material in the Babylonian Talmud is also presented separately in Ein Yaakov, a compilation of the Agada together with commentaries. Well-known works interpreting the Agado in the Talmud include Chidushe Agados Novelli on the Agado by Samuel Adels, The Maharsha. Chidushe Agados Novelli on the Agado by Judah Lo, The Maharal, as well as many other works by Lo, especially Ber Ha Gola. Yehoyada and Makapziel, names based on 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 20 by Yosef Hayim, The Ben Ish Chai. Bor Agados, clarification of the Agado, and Parish Al Kama Agado, commentary on several Agado by the Vilna Gaon. A and I a commentary on Ein Yaakov by Rav Cook. N Jacob, Ein Yaakov, Agada of the Babylonian Talmud by Rabbi Jacob Ibn Habib, revised and translated into English by Rabbi S H Z V I Hirsch Glick, copyright 1916. Topic. Development The Agada has been preserved in a series of different works, which, like all works of traditional literature, have come to their present form through previous collections and revisions. Their original forms existed long before they were reduced to writing. The first traces of the Midrashic exegesis are found in the Bible itself, while in the time of the Sopharim the development of the Midrash Agada received a mighty impetus, and the foundations were laid for public services which were soon to offer the chief medium for the cultivation of Bible exegesis. Much Agada, often mixed with foreign elements, is found in the Apocrypha, the Pseudepigrapha, the works of Josephus and Philo, and the remaining Judeo-Hellenistic literature, but Agadic exegesis reached its highest development in the great epic of the Mishnaic Talmudic period, between 100 and 550 CE. The Agada of the Amoraim sages of the Talmud is the continuation of that of the Tanaim sages of the Mishnah. The final edition of the Mishnah, which was of such signal importance for the Halakha, is of less significance for the Agada, which, in form as well as in content, shows the same characteristics in both periods. <laughs> Exegetic and homiletic Agada It is important to emphasize the fundamental difference in plan between the Midrashim forming a running commentary to the scripture text, and the homiletic Midrashim when the scholars undertook to edit, revise, and collect into individual Midrashim the immense array of Haggadah, they followed the method employed in the collections and revisions of the Halakot and the Halakhic discussions. The form which suggested itself was to arrange in textual sequence the exegetical interpretations of the biblical text as taught in the schools, or the occasional interpretations introduced into public discourses, etc., and which were in any way connected with scripture. 
Since the work of the editor was often merely that of compilation, the existing Midrashim show in many passages the character of the sources from which they were taken. This was the genesis of the Midrashim which are in the nature of running Haggadic commentaries to single books of the Bible, as Bereshit Rabbah, Ika Ribati, the Midrashim to the other Megillot, etc. See Midrash for more details. <laughs> Modern compilations The Ein Yaakov is a compilation of the Agadic material in the Babylonian Talmud together with commentary. It was compiled by Jacob ibn Habib and after his death by his son Rabbi Levi ibn Habib, and was first published in Saloniki Greece in 1515. It was intended as a text of Agada, that could be studied with the same degree of seriousness as the Talmud itself. Popularized anthologies did not appear until more recently. These often incorporate Agado from outside of classical rabbinic literature. The major works include Sefer Ha Agada, the Book of Legends, is a classic compilation of Agada from the Mishnah, the two Talmuds, and the Midrash literature. It was edited by Chaim Naaman Bialik and Yehoshua Hanna Ravnitsky. Bialik and Ravnitsky worked for three years to compile a comprehensive and representative overview of Agada. When they found the same Agada in multiple versions, from multiple sources, they usually selected the later form, the one found in the Babylonian Talmud. However, they also presented some Agado sequentially, giving the early form from the Jerusalem Talmud, and later versions from the Babylonian Talmud, and from a classic Midrash compilation. In each case every Agada is given with its original source. In their original edition, they translated the Aramaic Agado into modern Hebrew. Sefer Ha Agada was first published in 1908-11 in Odessa, Russia, then reprinted numerous times in Israel. In 1992 it was translated into English as the Book of Legends, by William G. Broad. Legends of the Jews, by Rabbi Louis Ginsberg, is an original synthesis of a vast amount of Agada from the Mishnah, the two Talmuds and Midrash. Ginsberg had an encyclopedic knowledge of all rabbinic literature, and his masterwork included a massive array of Agado. However he did not create an anthology which showed these Agado distinctly. Rather, he paraphrased them and rewrote them into one continuous narrative that covered five volumes, followed by two volumes of footnotes that give specific sources. Mimekor Yisrael, by Micah Joseph Berdachewski. Berdachevsky was interested in compiling the folklore and legends of the Jewish people, from the earliest times up until the dawn of the modern era. His collection included a large array of agado, although they were limited to those he considered within the domain of folklore. The Collected Works of Dov Noy. In 1954, Noy established the Israel Folktale Archives and Ethnological Museum at the University of Haifa, an archive containing over 23,000 folktales collected from all the various ethnic communities who live in Israel. See also Agadic Midrashim category. Midrash Moses in Rabbinic Literature Pardes Jewish Exegesis Rabbinic Literature